Summer update. I've been on a little vacation, so I've been out of the studio. A new friend of mine, she just gave me a big bag of books to borrow. Um, I haven't gone through them all, but one that's really stood out to me, and I've read this cover to cover, is this one, Carlson's Guide to Landscape Painting by John F. Carlson. And it's by the Dover Publication, which I really like their art books. They do a pretty good job, I think. And I've never done landscape painting really before. I did one plein air painting and it turned out, oh well, it was my first one, um, and there was a lot of learning things with taking paints outside and um, my big thing with working on that painting is just feeling overwhelmed with painting outside with trees and bushes and kind of how to simplify it and how to make a painting out of it. So I found this book really, really helpful and I liked it a whole bunch. It isn't just talking about plein air painting but also if you are doing sketches outside plein air sketches but going back into your studio to make a more refined painting. One thing that I really like from it is he talks about angles and consequent values. Angles and well more so talking I guess about planes in relation to the sky is going to be the brightest because of the sun is illuminating everything and so that's the brightest and then usually then the flat plane the the land the grass or sea whatever you're painting is not going to be your next value that's still pretty bright but not as bright as the sky um, slopes like mountains and hills are going to be a little bit darker and then the darkest thing are going to be the upright plains like trees and saying that it sounds really obvious but I guess I didn't think of it that way and he shows a lot of examples of that and I, it was just really helpful to be breaking down um, be breaking down what you're seeing. I think the one time that I went out plein air painting I didn't think of everything in simplified masses of value and he talks about the importance of doing that and that seems like a really good step-by-step -step approach for when you're coming up with a landscape painting to have these really big masses of values that are really clear and then you can start developing further from that. He talks about a lot of other things. He talks about trees and how to understand them, clouds and how they float and those two things I found really, I found them really interesting with when he's talking about trees and how to understand them, understanding the why they grow the way that they do and how they twist and really trying to understand why the tree looks the way it does in relation to where it's at like how it's going to be receiving light or interacting with other trees and he talks about the importance of going out and just uh, studying a lot of trees and studying a lot of clouds and really whatever you're going to be putting in your landscape because what I like about this book is it's he's kind of telling you how you can study things from life but then also have it not being such a you're if you're making a, a painting there you can either copy everything that you're seeing and he's saying that that's more a study or a sketch but for a painting to be a picture you there should be something behind it design should be thought of more and it should be not just everything should not be in super focus or exactly what you're seeing but instead of doing that think about what impressed you or what impression that nature is giving you and you want that to be really obvious so you simplify other things so the essence of the painting can really stand out and not be clogged up with a bunch of random detail everywhere so i like this book for that in the sense that he talks about studying from nature but also thinking he talks a lot about philosophy for what he thinks a picture should have rather than just a study and I think that's really interesting. So I recommend getting this book. I am borrowing it from a friend so I didn't buy it for myself. Um, on the back it says it's $9.95 in the USA. I don't know if that's still the price of it but I think if I get more into landscape painting this will be one that I'll definitely go back and refer to and probably buy myself. And then you can see all these pages too they're in black and white which um, it's fine for what he's talking about, but I think I'm going to go and Google his work so I can see it in color and get the full impact of it. And another thing that I did over my vacation was I got to see the eclipse in totality, which was incredible. I had never seen anything like that before. 
just it, visually, it's completely stunning where you're having the eclipse of the moon going over the sun and everything's getting darker. And so when it hits over the sun, I could take my glasses off and look at it with my naked eye because the sun's covered up by the moon and you see this really strong halo around the moon from the, the sun. And the, the sky, it doesn't look completely like night. I would say it looks more like twilight. And the sky was blue and purple and I could see stars or one star in particular and it was so bizarre because as the eclipse is happening before it gets in totality and i'm not really looking up at the at the sun so much and i'm just looking around my surroundings and because it's getting the sun is getting covered up by the moon so less light is coming through and you're getting that golden light effect everywhere but instead of the sun when it would that would normally happen either in the morning or in the evening where the sun is low in the sky having it up right above you and having that that happen where the light it seems like it's either the morning or the evening and the really odd thing was i was looking at the blades of grass i was in a park where i was watching this and i was looking at the blades of blades of grass and the shadows from it the grass were super short or almost non-existent since the sun is right overhead instead of it being lower in the sky where you get those long shadows and same with the trees too usually the tree shadows would be really long but they're the shadows were just like cut all around them and it was so bizarre and almost unsettling because you're seeing light effects that are kind of like smashed into one being in the middle of the day but also less light filtering through like it's either morning or evening so it was really really interesting and it was it was really it was really really spectacular and i i went online and i was trying to find pictures of the eclipse the to total eclipse and i couldn't find any any pictures all through google that actually show what your the, the human eye can actually see because either everything in the picture the whole sky is blacked out except for the halo around the moon or you can see the sky um, how it actually is being that not black but more like that twilight look to it but then the you can't really see the the moon or the sun because that's so blown out then so the eclipse is going to be happening in the united states where i can see it in seven years and so what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to take my phone and i'm going to record my voice saying everything that i'm seeing and maybe make a painting out of it hopefully because i think this is one example of where painting is really valuable because you can paint more what your eye is seeing rather than what a camera can capture and so i think that would be really really interesting to try and play around with that so definitely if you have the chance sometime in your life to see a total eclipse i recommend doing it because it was Pretty amazing.